So, is this cup half full or half empty? What about this one? Now, you may think this is a trick question, but in truth, I don't even care what your answer is. The only answer I care about is mine. Now, the reason I don't care about your answer isn't because it's not important, but because I can't control it. Only you can control your perspective, and when you have control of it, it's one of the most powerful tools at your disposal. Last year, I totaled my car. The simplified version of the story is that I turned at a bad time, sideswept a car in oncoming traffic, got startled, hit the gas, and drove right into a parked tractor trailer. I was cut out of the car and rushed to the hospital. Because I was blessed with no internal injuries, I was able to go home that night. However, the next day I wasn't as lucky when a police officer came to deliver the three things I was being charged with. The first was not wearing a seatbelt. And I explained to the officer that I was conscious immediately after impact. I panicked, I unbuckled my seatbelt, and I tried to get out of the car. However, I couldn't because I was trapped in it. And he said, fair enough, you should get a statement from your car dealership and car insurance to show that's a possibility, and you should be able to get out of that charge in court. And the second was reckless driving, which made a lot of sense, so I couldn't argue that and didn't plan to. And the third charge, I knew he was going to ask me about, but I was shocked and a bit insulted that I was already being charged with it. That was texting and driving. The lady who I sideswept was the first to call the police, and she reported that I was texting and driving. Now, my parents and I told the police officer that another person on site found my bag and found my phone inside of the zip pocket, because at this point, we didn't have my cell phone data to show that I was actually innocent. And he responded, that I probably just threw it in there at the last minute. Now, I believe we shouldn't shoot the messenger, but it's not the messenger's job to pass judgment. When an adult in a position of power told me that I was texting and driving based on his perspective of what a teenager is and a tiny bit of qualitative information that can't really be confirmed, I was a bit heartbroken. I felt pushed into a corner, and I felt pressured to confess to something that I didn't do. And I began to resent the policeman for the, for the views that he held of me. The feeling of resentment, plus my feeling of inadequacy due to the way I physically look, caused me to invite a lot of negativity into my life and to think very irrationally. I began to do the exact same thing as the police officer and project negative perspectives onto other people. When I returned to school, I thought all my teachers viewed me in the exact same way that the police officer did, and I began to project negative things onto them. I thought they were thinking I was irresponsible and wouldn't want to help me, so I didn't ask them for help, and I fell further, beh further behind. This was the first type of time in my life that I was truly struggling in school, and because my friends were doing fine, I became jealous of them, and I thought that if I didn't get my act together right away, they wouldn't like me anymore and would leave me behind. These irrational feelings persisted for about two months until my final time in traffic court. But before actually going to juvenile traffic court, my family met with a state prosecutor, and he told me that I would have to accept guilt to one of the charges. And I said, OK, I'll accept guilt to reckless driving, because it best describes what caused the accident. But he told me that I should accept guilt to not wearing a seatbelt because it would get me less points on my license. And at, this thought, and at this point, I just thought, are you serious? A month ago, a policeman was telling me that I should lie and confess to texting and driving, and now you want me to lie to get out of a situation that I created to take the easy road and do the wrong thing just, just because? Now, when I went into court, I went in there with a really bad attitude. Luckily, my parents did most of the talking, so I didn't get into any trouble. But um, I went in there with the perspective that the judge wouldn't listen to me, that we, she would automatically find me guilty of all three charges. But she did the exact opposite. She didn't find me guilty of any of those charges. The only thing I was charged with due to other conditions that caused my accident was driving over the center line. Even though I left the court with a case closed, I didn't feel any sense of resolution because I realized that I was holding a negative, irrational perspective of other people.
the judge, my friends, my teachers, and I needed to regain control of my perspective. Now, there isn't a universal way to do this, but I just needed to filter everything that was coming into me from my environment and my peers into what's positive and what's negative. For example, the influence of the police officer and the state prosecutor were negative. I felt insecure that I couldn't crawl into their minds and change what they thought of me, but I just needed to let that go. I needed to accept that the police officer may always believe that I was texting and driving, and that is his decision, and I can't control that. And once I actually did that, I was able to move on. And then, obviously, anything that's positive that leads you to be a better person, you should adopt that into your perspective and, help that, and let that help you move forward. Now, controlling your perspective isn't solely about focusing on you. It's about opening yourself up. It's about having the good judgment to know whether something's harmful and poisonous, so you should disregard it, or whether something is actually positive. And it's about taking responsibility so you can justify why you believe those things. And that's why I believe everyone should have an answer to whether or not the cup is half full or half empty. Personally, I believe the first one is half empty because I was in the process of emptying it. And the second one is half full because I was in the process of filling it. Some of you may agree with me, and some of you may think, oh, both are half full, both are half empty, and some of you may have completely different opinions. But maybe I have challenged the way you view whether or not the cup is half full or half empty. The truth is, we always have influence on what other people believe. But we can't control what they believe. Only they can make the decision to believe what they believe. So the number one thing that I've learned is that trying to control someone else's perspective is a game that I'm always going to lose. And I will always feel unhappy because I've lost that game. So as a result, I've decided that I'm just not going to play. And I dare you to refuse that game also. Thank you.